who started. Hello, friends. Um, I'm just going to wait just a second to make sure that my streams have caught up with me. All right, looks like Twitch is good, and then YouTube always has more of a delay, and I'm not entirely sure why. I'm sure it has to do something with their buffering whatnot. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Okay, everything's good, uh, at least in terms of things live streaming. Hello, I am extremely tired. Uh, I sort of haven't been sleeping super well lately, which I think is probably not unique to me. What if I pointed the mic at me? Probably that would sound slightly better, huh? All right, so we are working on a project that we've been working on for quite a while, and we are continuing to notice leaving spaces. Um, so I'm just going to go through and tidy these up a little bit. Uh, oh, wow. Um, so the project that we're working on is a basically a chatbot and virtual assistant that does the same thing as the New York Times dialect quiz. I only have to type in new at this point. And it's like, do you, did you mean this one? I do mean this one. And the basic idea is that um, you will answer a bunch of questions, um, but instead of a multiple choice option like this, you will instead just freeform say whatever it is that you would say, um, or I guess type, because we're going to start with a, um, a text-based bot. And then uh, we'll guess where you are from in the United States, whatever place is physically um, closest. And we are doing the... Um, uh, this one's going to be a problem. I've been thinking about that quite a bit. Um, City-state combination, and we're doing ones that had more than 15 respondents in the original Harvard dialect survey, which means we're going to have about 1,200 possible classes, give or take. Um, I'm just really quickly checking if we have any other leading or trailing spaces. And we've done quite a bit of work so far. The specific thing that we're looking on, looking for right now, is in order to gather the information for um, from a specific uh, user, we are trying to. Uh, we're not trying to. We're going to use a form to collect uh, each of these slots. So um, we'll ask people a question. Um, how do you say the word lawyer? Does it rhyme with boy or law? So lawyer, lawyer. Um, and then people will select, not select, answer one of these things. And then what we want to take is that freeform text and match it to one of the answers that we have uh, in our multiple choice formulation of this task because that's the data we're using to train our classifier. So we need to identify which feature matches the user's input most closely, and if it's none of them, then identify it as other. That's the idea. Um, and it looks like we don't have any other leading or training places. So what we did last week was, yeah, last Friday, uh, was we took all of the multiple choice answers we have I want to say 19 questions. I'm pretty sure it's 19 questions. Um, and have created this dictionary we can use for exact string matching. Um, so for the second person plural slot, we're going to see if somebody says, you all, yous, you lot, you guys, you ins, yins, you, um, etc. And that's the thing that we're doing. <laughs> we're doing great. Hi, Crop. Uh, I'm doing doing okay just very tired just very very tired um, I don't remember them but apparently I've been having nightmares and uh, just not sleeping great so actually I want coffee I also want water I got my hmm I don't know why that's picking up on the chroma key Interesting, uh, but it says I work hard so my hedgehog can have a better life and it's got a little picture of a hedgehog on it like that So I 
That's the mug. Woof. Okay, we have a dictionary. We are going to look to see for each of the slots, so we have 19 slots, um, second person plural, caught caught, rain sun. Um, this is a question about what do you call it when it's raining and sunning at the same time. Um, how do you say crawfish, crawdad, crayfish, crowfish? Oh, all right. Uh, oh, some of my cousins say mud bug. I don't, but I've definitely heard them say it. Um, the night before Halloween. And today we're going to do just looking to see if the exact answer is in our list of multiple choice answers. It's very weird that this is see-through. And I don't know what it is because there's nothing in front of me that is the correct Union Tacoma see-through. And I don't, maybe it's coming up from the back? No, it's definitely coming from that direction. Mysterious. I never take a sip of coffee. All right, pull it together. Okay, we have a dictionary with all of the possible answers. We are gonna have to futz with this a little bit because some of these are not gonna be things that people will say. But for now, I am going to keep these answers the same because if we change the answers at all, we're gonna have to go back and retrain the model. And that's going to be a whole big thing all on its own. Uh, and I believe we actually have to do that anyway because we don't have the same, um, we're using the names of the slots here and not the uh, questions. Uh, Crop says, are the birds still fighting? No, they're not. Um, I think it must be, I think it must be sparrow mating season because they've been super territorial recently. Uh, it's like, you mean spring, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. Anyway, um, I have not seen them, but I've just seen, like, I think it's the same Mariel Sparrow around for the last little bit, so I think he, he won. Uh, it's the most exciting thing that's happened in this apartment in, like, a month. So, yeah, so, like, this way, no one's going to say through way slash through way. They're going to say one or the other of these. We need to find a way, eventually, to map one of those answers to one of these answers, but we'll just deal with that when we get to it. So we're using this example from the docs, and I'm just going to uh, remove this comment because it's not helpful. And instead of validating cuisine, we're gonna start with our first one, which is, scroll, 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 uh, second person plural. Uh, so we're gonna say validate second person plural to validate the slot called second person plural, which is also defined in our domain, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All right, da, 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 da. Uh, domain, dict, any. Did we? I don't think we did, I don't think we changed anything down here last time. Noted, okay. And I'm pretty sure, uh, let's, let's pull up the original docs to make sure we're not doing anything just. Okay, so where is it getting cuisine DB? It's getting it in this static method, yeah. Have I defined self? Yes. No, it doesn't matter if you define it because of how Python classes work. Okay. Um, all right, so we actually don't want cuisine DB. We want answers DB. And then specifically, we want the second person plural uh thing we want to look at the values for the key of second person plural and i don't think this is the right uh i don't think this is the right syntax okay so 
this is a dictionary and we need to look up all the values in a key. Uh, Python dictionary, all values for a key. It, there's only one value, but it's a list. So all values from a dictionary. Uh, accessing key value in dictionary. I just need the, the syntax is all that I am looking for. Okay. So it should be in square brackets. <laughs> and then this is called second person plural. At some point, I wonder if it might be worthwhile to do something a little bit more dynamic, where for each let me clarify, I don't know how to do this in Python, but it seems like something that should be possible where we generate the validation function for each of our slots based on the name of the slot. Um, there's There's gotta be a way to do that in Python, right? That's gonna avoid us having to write the same function 19 times with small differences um, because all of them are going to be checking whether it's in the dictionary, and then if it's something else, assigning it to other. So, I guess we'll just take a big old detour, uh, but also we're gonna assign this to other if it's not in the list. Other answer not in original multiple original list of multiple choice answers. All right. Woof. Okay. More coffee. Oh, sorry. I hit the Twitch chat. Excellent, I have not been ignoring anybody in the Twitch chat. There's gotta be a way to dynamically generate functions in Python, right? Right, you know what, let's just, let's just do that. Um, I think it'll save us enough work and it'll be a cool thing to learn. Dynamically generate functions in Uh, Nurlan says, what is your TensorFlow version? That is a good cue. Uh, all right, and I'm in a Raza install. Uh, neither of those are helpful. Uh, is it just... I get the version from this. Oh, there's a way to list. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I think I remember. I think I remember. I think it's just pip list, right? Yeah, all right. Uh, TensorFlow. Sorry, I'm, again, just, just struggling today. 2.1.0 to answer your question. Um... King End says, Lambda, do you mean? Uh, I guess we could do it with lambdas. I was more thinking um, generating the functions at runtime, uh, which may be unnecessarily complex and unpythonic, but I'm not deep enough in Python lore to know that. So I'm going to check it. Is that what lambda functions do? Mm-hmm. Oh, like, sorry, I'm just like staring at a Stack Overflow answer in another tab and just going like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, Jerry says, uh, tensorflow dot underscore underscore version underscore underscore. Oh, helpful. Um, 
for in the future. Uh, create function. All right. Yeah. I'm just reading. I can read aloud. Uh, no one says Rossi gives an error because of the TensorFlow version. Um, is this with installing Rasa or is it with trying to load a trained model? Because if it's trying to load a trained model, the easiest thing is just going to be to retrain the model. It probably won't take that long. Uh, Nuon says, need to TensorFlow less than 2.2. Um, is this during installation? If it's during installation, I would point you towards the uh, installation videos on the Rasa YouTube channel because they will walk you through it, the process. Uh, the Ubuntu one should be up soon, TM. Uh, I'm not 100% sure what the, the timeline is on that, but we do have the Mac and Windows ones up because that's where people tend to have the most trouble. Specifically Windows, let's let's be honest. That's the one where people have the most trouble. Install it. Yeah, um, I would uh, work through the installation videos and see if that helps. Um, also, I don't think on Windows 3.8 is supported yet, so I do 3.7 for next. Uh, Cropwork says, I missed the point. What's required or missing now for Rachel? Uh, alertness, mostly. So, my thinking was to... Okay, but Lambda's have to, okay, so, sorry, let me just walk you through what I'm thinking in my head right now and not uh, verbalizing super well. So we basically wanna create the exact same function 19 times, yeah? Uh, and each of them is going to be, hey, look for a given slot, in this case, second person plural. And for that given slot, I want you to look in the dictionary key that corresponds to that slot in the answers db dictionary which we have created here um, and if the answer is in the dictionary all well and good just use that one and if it's not we're going to set it to other instead which should be a category for uh, all of the questions except for the one where it's not um, i think there's only one that doesn't have other let's check I'm pretty sure it's the, do you say, uh, I think the ones that have the two possible answers don't have an other answer. Yeah, yeah, so see like, do you say caught, caught, different or the same? That doesn't have an other option because different and same cover the sum of all possible answers unless people just go, you know, wild. <laughs> uh, I guess we could replace that one with a button but that's not gonna work for voice, so. Um, I believe all of the other ones have an other, so even in the second person plural one, there's an other, even though it's out of order. Uh, the other one that might not have an other option is lawyer, lawyer, uh, which is in here somewhere. Nope, lawyer, lawyer doesn't, okay. Uh, Jenna says, why can't you just have one function that takes the question key as a parameter? That's a good question. I have been working under the assumption, which could be incorrect, that in order for Raza to handle the validation, the function itself needs to be named validate underscore slot. Um, and you know what? Let's, let's check the docs because I don't know that that is the case. Raza docs. Forms. All right. No 
Nope, that's a blog post. Da, 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 stories. Uh, I think you can why am I doing this in a second one? I'm just gonna go to the Rod the Docks and then we'll, we'll figure out together from there. All right, uh, one thing to double check when you are checking out the Raza docs, we do have legacy docs as well. So make sure it's raza.com, not legacy docs, unless you're using the legacy version of the product. I'm interested in forms. Whip. Uh, validating user input. That's what we're looking for. Let's make this a little bit wider so we can see the whole thing. Yes, here's the answer to my question that I was assuming and it does appear to be correct. I, I think I read this before, so maybe I put it in my brain and then immediately forgot the source of where I was getting it. Um, by default, validation only rechecks if the requested slot was successfully extracted from the slot mappings. If you want to add custom validation, for example, to check a value against a database, you can do this by writing a helper function, helper validation function with the name validate underscore slot name. Yeah, so that's why I want to generate functions from whole cloth, including the name of the function. Which lambdas can't do. Also, don't lambdas have to be one line? Am I making that up? I feel very strongly that I'm not, but I could be. Uh, and I don't trust myself right now. Uh, lambda functions, one line? Question mark? <laughs> uh, doo -doo -doo. Here's an example. Yes, I know what they look like. I'm pretty sure they have to be one line. Uh, also, isn't the recommendation now that you don't use lambda functions and instead use lists? Oh, what's it called? It's not list part and sing. It's um, list, um, not list, list notation? No. Yes? No? Uh, list notation? Python. Slice notation? Nope. Nope. Anyway, the other thing <laughs> for um, short form questions. So I. I guess the other thing that I could do is, hmm. Um, oh, also, I do need to get rid of this where we say that the cuisine was wrong because I think that's just going to confuse people. Um, I guess the other thing I could do is just write 19 separate functions, but that seems like overkill and like it will just ruin my day so bad so bad it will ruin my day um but i might that might be the best option because we may need to so i'm trying to think are we gonna need to do exactly the same thing for each of our form questions and we should drink some coffee. This is my third cup today, by the way. Uh, I'm just, I'm struggling, struggle bill. So if there are questions for which we're going to want to do something different, then it makes sense to have a different function for each of them. Uh, Jenna says, the Stack Overflow, Overflow post you had up earlier may help. One function that handles everything, one function inside of that gets its name from the parameter of the top level function. Yeah, I think that will work. Are there any of these questions for which we will need to take a different approach? Even if there are some questions, we can still use that for the rest of the questions though. So I think that's going to be a time saver for us. Yep. So let's let's do that. Let's give that let's give that the old college try. Um, 
Yeah. Oh, the geophysicist says you seem to be at 5% sound volume. Let's turn it up then. Also, I'm just real tired, which I imagine is not helping. It's a little peaky. How's that? Is that better? Should be a little bit louder. Ugh. All right. Where's that stack overflow? Boop. There we go. Goodbye. All right, so uh, I do not want them to be anonymous. I want them to be dynamic and named, which is a little bit weird. Uh, Jenna says, and handle those lacking the other option with if else. Yeah, there's just one though. Um, and I guess I'm really just relying on the users here <laughs> uh, not to put something that's not different or same for that one. Um, and I do want to do fuzzy matching at some point in the future, which would mean we would be able to pick the closest of different or same from whatever answer the user has given. All right. There's lots of people saying don't do this, but you know what? When have I ever listened to good advice? I try to. Um, exact. Okay, but this is anonymous. Uh, uh -huh. Okay, so it looks like Name args, okay. Um, yeah, let's try that. Let's quickly see what everyone else says about that. How to create modify volume function. I just tried it. When you change the call at the end with the correct number of args, it's seg faults. Hmm. Okay, this person suggests this. Args, keywords, pass, return, function time. Oh, okay. Um, that makes sense to me. So what you're doing is that you have a function. Within it, you are defining a separate function. And then you're returning just that whole function. I don't know what the star args and double star keyword args means. Um, I'm guessing that it is optional. Within the function create a function, you can choose, you can control which template to choose. The inner function serves as a template. The return value of the creator function is a function. After assignment, you use my new function as a regular function. Gotcha. Typically, this pattern is used for function decorators, but may be handy here too. All right. 14 upvotes and no one's saying it's a bad idea, so let's do it. All right. I guess my one big problem with this is that maybe we're gonna run into a thing where the <laughs> this function never gets called because it doesn't start with validate. Um, yeah, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. All right, Jenna says unpacking. Oh, that's what the, the star means, that it's unpacking? Okay, helpful. Oh, all right, more coffee into me. Mm. Okay. So, boop, 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 boop. Uh, this should all be indented. All right. Uh, I guess, no, I know that I deleted that. I guess what we would do next is that we create a function for each of our values. So we would probably actually want to do that. And that would be the same as, yeah, 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 yeah. I think this will work. Uh, Pranav says, I'm watching more Rachel videos these days. I have to present my ACL paper online. And so I'm looking at her process. Oh, thank you. Uh, 
I would say this is not a very good, <laughs> good example of how to um, present a paper well online. Actually, do you have a, I don't think any of my paper presentations are online. Mm, I think I have some like conference talks, but they're more like tech conferences. Um, I guess I, res I, like, I present other people's research these days, but I'm not really doing much of my own. All right. So. Mm hmm. Let's get you. Do, 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 do. Let's just get you right in here. Just nestle you right in there. Okay. And looks like I messed up my white spacing very badly. Okay, here we go. Uh, validate slot is what I'm going to call this right now. And then uh, I want to make sure that I return, return validate slot. All right. And... Validate user input. I'm gonna make sure that all of this says correctly. Set the value of v to inputted user provided. Um, let's just wrap this because this is almost certainly too wide to be PEP8 compliant. Um, set slots other if answer not in list of, and let's wrap you. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Um, and I need to get the name of the slot. Uh, you are dictionary, solicitation form, can I just, Add it here. <laughs> Name of slot. All right, we're going to get rid of this bit where we tell people that they did a bad job. All right. Is it three single quotes or three double quotes that creates a doc string? I feel like it's three, three, three double quotes. Uh, function to generate our validation functions. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I've discovered another place where I need to use name of slot. Otherwise, we're always going to check against the second person plural, which is not correct. Okay, I think that's all of them, though. To generate our validation functions, since they're pretty much the same for each slot. I wonder if this is going to work. It'll be an exciting journey of discovery we can go on together. Hmm. Good. Yes. All right, validate slot. Did I call this this? Yes, yes, yes. That's correct. All right. Um, I guess we can just start the action server and see if it uh, returns any upsetting things for us. All right, so let's just try it with second person plural and see if that works. So what we need to do is we need to call it validate second person plural because that is the specific name it's going to look for. And then uh, uh, we shouldn't call it create a function. We should call it something more helpful. Uh, create validation fun function. Create validation function. Just one. It's only creating one validation function at a time. So we should not say functions at the end or people might have an unreasonable idea of what it does. 
and then we should say that the name of slot is Uh, second person plural, right? All right. Let's save this and then try to run our validation function. And I don't think, no, and I'm in the right directory, so let's, uh, there we go. Uh, and I should be able to see that my actions.py file, which is where we're doing all of this, is in here, and it looks like it is fantastic. Uh, and let's do Raza run actions, which will start a server running the actions code. All right, well, problems have arisen. Uh, King Eng says both will work. There's a bit of a delay, so I'm not 100% sure what you were referring to with both. Uh, but if it's still relevant, I'll show you all. You'll jump back in. Uh, NSA Nsagiv, I'm sorry if I'm saying that right, says, what are you building? Uh, well, right now, we want to validate a number of pieces of user input, um, basically by looking to see if they are in this dictionary. And we have a number of slots. And for each slot, we have a number of things that it can be. And we want to make sure for each slot, that the thing is in that the thing that the user has said is in the list of things that we know how to deal with, basically. And we are doing uh, n sagiv. Ah, uh, doing that by dynamically creating a uh, function for each validation we need to do because the content is pretty much the same. Uh, oh, for doc strings. Okay, so you can use three single or three double quotes. Thank you. Wow, that was from a while ago. <laughs> Sorry, I am probably a little bit less responsive to the chat today than I am in general because I'm dying, Squirtle. I'm not dying. That's a reference to a webcomic. Is it a web? I guess it's like a meme anyway. All right. Problems have arisen. The specific problems are invalid syntax here with the name of the slot. Uh, so Jenna mentioned that the stars mean unpacking. And I'm not entirely sure what that is. So I'm going to look up patent key words unpacking. What does that mean? That's my exact question. All right, let's find out this. Uh, what are the uses for star star quargs? I'm just gonna say quargs. I'm assuming it stands for keywords, but you know what? I don't know that that's right. It could very well be wrong. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, oh, that's the same thing I want. Args. Blah, blah, blah. Close six years ago. List of arguments is positional arguments. Dictionary, whose keys become separate keywords arguments, and the values become values of those arguments. I think to enter lists, in, is there a simple example of how they're used? Are they placeholders, or do you use them in code? Once you get a grasp on these, you'll never want to miss them, especially if you ever have to deal with PHP's func star args. That's not an answer. <laughs> uh, uh, and Sagiv uh, says, I'm a new Python programmer, but I like the vibe. It seems like you know what you're doing. Thank you. That's very kind. I would say mostly I do. Uh, all right. These two argument arguments can be added to any function declaration as long as they are the last two. Mm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I believe we have found the source of our error. Assuming this random person on spot, Spotify, uh, Stack Overflow is not saying wrong things because that would be, that would be sad. But as I remember, they had some upvotes. All right, let's try this again. Do, do, do. Run that action server. 
expected and an indented block, line 248. All right. I'm assuming that when I said 248, what I should have said was 284. Okay. Is this too far indented? I'm pretty sure that's right. Uh, Barbie says, hi guys, sounds good. Hey, how's it going? Uh, Jenna says, see the answer with the trick is to use globals. Whoop. This one? Da, da, da. Only by convention, there's no hard argument to use them. An arbitrary number of arguments. Named arguments that you have not defined in advance. Oh. That's cool. Um, okay, so the syntax is just the stars and the rest of it is by convention, like so much in Python, um, which is, is not a burn, it's just a programming language that has a large number of community conventions around it. But you know, it's, that's, that's true of most languages. It's just sometimes frustrating as a I guess everyone's always learning every language that they're using, so to me, it's frustrating to me. Um, Kona says, hi from China. Hi. I'm hoping you are in China. Um, and that this is not a sort of joke in poor taste. Uh, from the above Stack Overflow link. Oh, I can't see the link. Um, it must have been blocked. Uh, I'll try and figure out how I can change those settings a little bit. Okay. Um, so I don't think I actually need the args, keywords, args, because I do know exactly the argument that I'm going to use, um, which is name of slot. I only need one argument. So peace out, buddy. Uh, and I don't know what I did here. So it says it expects indent. Maybe the doc string has to be indented. Maybe that seems right. All right, let's try this one more time. Da, 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 da. Have I done it correctly? Probably not. We'll find out. Error. Name. Second person plural is not defined. Yes, I believe it will need to be a string. All right, let's try that one more time. I'm assuming that's where the error was, and I'm not going to double check because uh, I don't want to. <laughs> yeah, no, that is where the error was. All right, all right. Oh, hi. So it looks like we don't have any errors. That doesn't mean it's going to do what we think it will do when we actually run the thing, but Fingers crossed. All right, let's add the rest of our slots and then I guess test it. And by test it, I mean use the assistant all the way through and see if we get the, uh, the validated answers out. All right, so uh, I'm gonna open up Oh, actually, I think it's in question key, right? Let's see. Yeah, okay, here are all the slot names in row. So I am just going to uh, use this to, where was he? There we are. Okay, so I'm just gonna do this to generate all of these. Um, and again, the reason we don't wanna use lambdas with this is because Raza is specifically looking for, um, wait, 18, 19, right? Uh, Roz is specifically looking for functions named validate name of slot. Uh, two, three, four, five, six. Seven. I should probably copy it with the tab, huh? Eight, nine, ten, 
Uh, and this is why we didn't want to do it by hand the entire time. All right, so second person plural, and then we had caught, caught, whether or not those are the same or different. Uh, for me, they are different, which you may be able to hear if you don't have the merge shirt. Rain, sun. And this is still like a fair amount of copying and pasting, but way less than having 19 enormous functions, right? Guess I didn't copy that. Crawfish. Halloween. Uh, and all of these questions are designed to elicit information about, I realize I haven't gone through and changed what the second part of that is, but that's just because my screen is very narrow right now and I'll go back and do that next. Um, each of these questions are designed to elicit information about um, specific regional variants in American English. This will currently only work for American, and by American I mean specifically the United States, um, not the Americas generally, English. And uh, that is a, let's see, beverage shoes. Oh, I see. I selected the whole, the whole row. A limitation of the project currently is that I'm only looking at one variety of one language. Um, but if you were interested in extending this using a dialect, elicitation tasks for other varieties of other languages, uh, it would hopefully be fairly easy. I have uh, open sourced all the code as well. I mean, not what we've done today, obviously. I haven't committed anything yet. Um, but you should be able to find that on my GitHub, which is uh, at rctatman. So if you're interested in doing something for your language, uh, you should be able to. Get in there, get in there. Verge, brew through, a brew through is a drive through liquor store. Uh, and most people in the United States don't have a term for that. And I do, that is very regionally bounded. Okay. And now let's do the second half of this. All right, so caught, caught. Boo, boo, boo. Rain, sun. Uh, one thing that we do need to do is we actually need to go back and retrain our classifier using the names of the slots. Uh, and also I have a, so for the, the responses of the participants that are using as training data, I only have those with label encoding. So I have the responses as numbers and not as texts. And we turned them back into text so that we could have an encoder that we could use with participant responses as well, so the model um, could know what a two was basically, and then correctly convert uh, a user's input into a two. Um, but I think that there is a non-zero probability that when I did that sort of reverse encoding and took the numbers of the responses from the um, participants that we have, I may have inadvertently used the wrong encoding for that because I don't have um, I don't actually have access to the original encoding scheme that was used. So I don't know why I'm not double clicking. Um, I may need to go back and fix that because our classifier as it stands has absolutely abysmal performance. Uh, it's about five percent five percent accuracy with uh, top three. So 5% of the time, the person's uh, no, dialect area is correctly identified in the top three uh, options identified by the assistant, which is not ideal. All right. So I'm hoping that this works. <laughs> uh, let's see. Create validation functions for each of our questions. I don't know if this is clever or not. Uh, Aram says uh, you can control D and multiply, multiply text change faster. Um, I don't want to change all of it though. I only wanted to change two of these here. So I'm, thank you for the, uh, uh, the tip, but I think it would introduce some additional problems. Uh, what am I building? I am building 
Uh, today we're working on validation for this quiz. So we'll ask people um, questions using this virtual assistant chatbot sort of thing. Um, and then they can, it can put in any information. But what we want to do is uh, make sure that their information is something that are Ooh, sorry, that cannot have sounded good to you guys. Uh, we want to make sure that our information is something that our uh, uh, classification algorithm can handle correctly because our classification algorithm was handled, was trained on multiple choice answers and we are changing those to free form answers. So people could say like banana for what you call, you know, rubber soled athletic shoes and uh, our classifier has never seen anyone say banana previously. So what we're doing now is we're taking answers like banana and assigning them to the category of other is the, the general idea. Hopefully that makes sense. All right. Let's start by running this action server. So the action server will run the Python code. Uh, in this case, when you're using uh, Rasa, you can use sort of any arbitrary code in the back end of your assistant to do you know, whatever it is that you need to do. Um, but that does need to run on a separate, uh, a separate server than the server that's handling the, um, the dialogue part of the task. So, uh, Rasa shell. So we're just going to use this from the shell right now. Once we get this up and running to the point where it's actually like usable and good to use, uh, we will probably set up a Raza X server, um, which is more for, for iterating quickly, but we don't really have like a good proof of concept yet, which is what we're working on right now. Ram says, I like Python syntax. Yeah, that's not bad. All right. Hi. Oh, cool. That's good to know. I should uh, definitely um, upgrade to the diet classifier, which we've uh, we've launched relatively recently in in Raza, and it is um, if you're if you're familiar with uh, sort of conversational AI. Wow, it took me a long time to remember what that word was, uh, or or dialogue systems you generally want to identify sort of what a person's trying to say and then important bits of information in it. So like, hi, my name is Roberta. You want to remember Roberta is that person's name. Um, and the figuring out the pieces of information in the text is uh, usually done via entity identification and figuring out what the, that someone is saying what their name is, like the whole turn is intent classification. Um, and Diet does both of those together using multitask learning. Yes, I'd love to take a quiz. Anyway, sorry, a little bit of a, a tangent. I would say pill bug. And I'm actually going to take this for real because I want to make sure that my answers are good. Soda. And there'll be 19 of these questions. Um, hmm. All right, let's check the action server. We have an issue. What is the issue? Invalidate slot. So we validated the first slot okay, it looks like, but we did not validate the second slot. Interesting. So Pillbug was correctly validated. Soda was not. Consultation form, all right. And we got the error, the SANIC endpoint, forms.py, validate slots. Okay, line 294 in actions was where the error was. 294. Hmm. Dot answers db, name of slot, name of slot. This is called answers db, right? Uh, so this is a, a dictionary with all of our multiple choice answers in it. Answers underscore db. Yeah, that looks right. Mm. Mm -hmm. Validate slot. Nope, that is definitely correct. If Uh, 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 uh. Text, domain, text, any. 
okay. So these should all be the same for all of the slots. I'm checking to see if we accidentally included something slot specific, and it looks like we didn't. Um, Slot other value yes okay so that should definitely be correct uh, let me double check if pill bug is in our list of things soda definitely is I know for sure Let's see, pill bug hmm interesting interesting uh, so it looks like it's working for the, uh, what about roly poly? Oh, interesting. Okay. So do I just, did I miss one? Cut, cut, crayfish Halloween. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So beverage, we definitely have. Did I just like straight up forget to add one? And that's why that one worked. Uh, Zelt CM says, data science job question. I was talking with someone, current undergrad in math, who was looking at breaking into the field. And they wanted to know if it was worth pursuing a master's degree before applying for jobs. Do you have any insight into how valuable a master's degree is or is not for a first job in data science? Varies wildly depending on the program. Um, there are programs that I think would help you develop skills. Um, a lot of them are kind of cash grabs <laughs> from what I've seen um, that are sort of the same thing as an existing curriculum, but repackaged with data science on it with a bigger price tag. Um, in general, for everybody, I recommend against going to grad school if possible. It's uh, expensive, even if you end up not paying for it in terms of you're giving up time at sort of the beginning of your career. Um, so yeah, that's my sort of broad answer. Uh, all right, well, I missed one. Like, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Hmm. What's the slot called? Uh, that'll be in domain, right? Yep. Okay. Bug is what the slot is called. Yeah, no, we absolutely do not have bug. Uh, is it in here? Nope. Sure ain't. All right. Well, we've, we found an error. Noted. Um, I guess we'll handle that later. So it just was never checked for some reason. Okay. Um, let me just. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So the form is definitely collecting it. We just haven't um, included it in our uh validation so i'm gonna add it to do to do validate bug slot okay um but that doesn't answer our main question which is why the validation didn't work in the first place so um uh, swoop Sue uh, says this is a wonderful platform to work in the conversational ai demand oh thank you uh, I really like Rasa. Uh, it's a, it's a nice technology. <laughs> Ravi says, Rachel is Python's error queen. I, yeah, I'll accept that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Hopefully it comes with a crown that there's definitely like a Python scepter that I've seen at PyCons. I don't know if there's like a, a crown. I don't think that I deserve it. <laughs> there is one. I also don't think I can apparently drink very well. Okay. Hmm. Uh, Zeltiam says, my professional feeling is that you just need to have the skills, but I don't know whether interview committees will say no postgraduate pass. 
I think it's going to vary wildly. Um, yeah, I also, I mean, the job market is changing a lot right now. So any advice from my time on the job market is not going to be as relevant, I don't think. Um, yeah, in general, my recommendation for people who are interested in working in data science is to work on sort of a, a portfolio of projects that you can be like, hey, I've done X and here it is. And you can play with it and see if it's good. Okay, let's, let's look at the error again. See specifically what it was. All right. Function object is not subscriptable. I see. I see. Hmm. So we have created our dictionary as a function. Yes, I see. Is that how it was done in the docs or have I gone rogue? Let's pop open that. I wonder if it would make sense to do it as like a, a method. No, methods or functions. Whatever one is like the class within a class. I forget what that's called. Okay, so it's definitely a dictionary. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Okay. Wait, yes, 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 yes. And then here. Okay. Uh, so I think what I need to say is you can still be a function if you want. Here we go. Uh, but also I want the name of the slot. I don't think that's going to work. I think that is not going to work. But you know what? We're going to give it the old college try uh, and see if maybe actually it does work. Uh, so number one, we are going to need to restart. I don't need you right now. Peace out. Uh, we're going to restart the action server. Uh, we saved our changes. Yes. Excellent. And then we're going to go back to our command line and just stop real quick. Uh, and then we're going to restart from scratch and see if this works. All right. Uh, hi to start our interaction. You could use any greeting. Nope. Wrong side. Do you want to to learn more about where in the United States people talk most like you. Yes, I love quizzes. They make me so happy. Uh, why don't I move me so that I'm not... Whoop. All right. Uh, this won't trigger validation because I just haven't included it, but it will set the slot value. Uh, this will trigger validation. All right, let's go through and just take the, so this should be set as other because I made a typo and we're not doing fuzzy matching. Um, oh, no, I don't, it, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter if I say the, the thing different. That should be set as other. So I think we're gonna get a list of all our, our slots when we're done unless I remove that from the assistant, um, which if I did, I, is gonna mess up my whole day and I'm gonna have to put it back in. Crawfist. That would be a good video game character. <laughs> it's just got like little, little crawdads for hands, you know, punch, 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 and it's like the little, little pinchers are out there. Anyway, Ugh. Uh, I guess I call that a sub. Or did you call some of the access road? So some of these will be other, and some of these should be assigned to the correct value that I input because that is tennis shoes. Uh, because that's those correct values will be in the dictionary and looked up uh, highway. 
Should almost be. This is this is wrong. That is a joke answer. That is not a thing that I would call it. I I would, but not like seriously. Uh, necking. So that slot should be set to other um, rather than yard sard, which is how it would be set currently. Frosting because I don't like icing. They, I can use them both, but they mean different things. Uh, lawyer, boy. <laughs> Robbie says, I hate video games. That's fair. Uh, kitty corner. They are not for everybody. Uh, Firefly or lightning bug. I can say either. Ugh. Okay, I think we have one or two more after this. Uh, brew through. Two more. I think the last one's gonna be about water fountains. Uh, also, the little delay is window specific and there's a way to get around it. I just haven't bothered to. Uh, but basically it's because you're running uh, at, on the port. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay, excellent. Okay, it's working. Um, so if you look at these, you can see that a lot of my answers, I realize that there's weird white spacing. Um, you can see that a lot of the answers have been set to other, but a lot of the other ones are the ones that I actually um, put in. Uh, the white spacing is weird because the way that I am putting these out. Uh, <laughs> Uh, um, Robbie said, I hate video games, and E Patrol says, that's because you never play Crawfist, the very good, very real video game that definitely exists. All right, so this is a good first pass. It's been an hour, and I very much want a nap, and very much have things to do today. I think I'm gonna call that here. Um, so what we've done today is we figured out the exact mapping. Um, and also I learned about dynamically generating functions in Python, which was a cool thing. Uh, and I'm not gonna bother going through and fixing this white space cause I'm just gonna, um, hmm. Actually, I think I did go back and fix it. I just haven't retrained the model. So it's still got the old white spacing that I hadn't fixed yet. Um, but I don't care that much cause I'm not gonna show this to the, the users. Um, I might at some point if they're interested, if they're like, hey, what are all my answers? Um, or like how many people had each answer, that could be fun. Uh, but for now, I'm not gonna show that to the answers, the users, I'm just gonna say all done. You sound like you come from these places. Uh, and these are, no, no, where's my terminal? Just show me the terminal, there we go. Uh, and these particular three answers are from a real user and those places are not close together. Uh, not a real user, a real participant in the in the experiment, um, which is one of the reasons why I'm a little bit mm, nervous about the model. Uh, <laughs> Robbie, Craw Crawfist does not exist. It's a, it's a fake thing, as far as I know. Uh, <laughs> Aram says, welcome back to bottom screen. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Oh, I remember last year I was talking about, I wasn't entirely sure what my default encoding was. It looks like my system encoding is default, is UTF-8, which is the cor correct one. So that's good. It's not, other encodings can be correct for different applications, but UTF-8 is probably the best one to use, is my strong opinion. So, that worked pretty well, actually. I'm pleased. The thing that we need to do next is figure out how to deal with things that are sort of like close but no cigar. Uh, so I believe for one of my answers, I said, well, also I need to add bug. Let's, uh, let's, just, let's just add bug right now, just real quick. Um, how did it get removed is my cue. Uh, Oh no, I'm gonna have to. <laughs> Probably says, oh, thanks, sorry. Uh, I don't think it was clear that I was I was joking. Uh, I had been told that I'm a little bit deadpan. Uh, you no, know, no, I'll just, I'll do this afterwards and then um, push to GitHub. 
Yes. So I think what we're going to do on Friday is we're going to dive into fuzzy matching a bit. So instead of just saying either you said the exact thing that we know about or you didn't, uh, we're going to find the closest answer to the one that you said. So if you did something like, um, mm -mm 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 -mm. so if you said something like goosey night, but G-O-O-S-I-E night, we would map your answer to this one instead of the other category. Uh, or if you said something like, uh, I don't know, instead of I have no word for this, you would um, be mapped to I don't know rather than I don't have no word for this. That's harder because that's a bigger edit distance and it's sort of more conceptual. Uh, and I'm guessing enough of these words are unique enough that they're going to be out of vocabulary for most embedding systems. So we can't do like an embedding distance um, semantic -y, as much as embeddings can counter encode semantics things. Uh, yeah, okay, so that's what we'll do on Friday. And hopefully I'll be bright-eyed and bushy-tailed and not very tired. Uh, all right, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you uh, learned something. I think the most exciting thing for me was learning about dynamically generating functions, which was fun. Uh, and we will reconvene same time, same channel on Friday. And I will see you then. Thanks for joining. Bye.